Iron deficiency anemia, case A, hematology. I extracted this case from case files internal medicine. I based my knowledge in Davidson's principles and practice of medicine and Harrison's principles of internal medicine. I also used a paper published by the American Academy of Family Physicians by the name of Iron Deficiency Anemia Evaluation and Management. History here, we have a healthy 52 years old man. He complains of increasing fatigue for the past four to five months. He exercises daily. However, he noticed he's becoming short of breath. He denies any orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. He, he denies swelling in his ankles. However, he reports occasional joint pain for which he takes over the counting, over the counter of buprofen. Uh, he denies bowel changes, melina, or bright red blood per rectum. He reports vague left side abdominal uh, pain for a few months, which goes on and off, but it is not related to food intake. The patient denies any fever or chills or nausea or vomiting. He has lost a few pounds intentionally with diet and exercise. On examination, we found that he weighs 205 pounds and he has uh, he's afebrile and he has slight pallor of the conjunctiva skin and palms. He has no uh, lymphadenopathy. Uh, his chest uh, auscultation is clear bilaterally. Uh, examination of the cardiovascular system reports um, regular rate and rhythm, no rub or gallop, but there is a systolic ejection murmur. His abdomen is soft, non-tender, without hepatospinomegaly. Uh, bowel sounds are present. He has no extremity edema or cyanosis or clubbing. His peripheral pulses are palpable and symmetric. So uh, we found that by investigation, his hemoglobin is 8.2 gram per deciliter. Questions. What is the most likely diagnosis? And what is your next diagnostic step? And how could you manage this? Anemia. Uh, well, if we talk about symptoms, there are non-specific symptoms and uh, non-specific signs. Uh, non-specific symptoms such as tiredness, lightheadedness, breathlessness, and development or worsening of ischemic symptoms such as angina. Non-specific signs, we could find pallor, tachypnea, tachycardia, raised jugular, uh, venous pressure, flow murmurs, ankle edema, or postural hypertension. However, let's see what we have here in this case. We found that there's a healthy 52 years old man. Uh, he complains of four to five months of increasing fatigue during exercise. He suffers breathlessness. He uses uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs for joint pain. He has pallor, as you could see here in his uh, uh, mucous membrane conjunctiva, and he is in the palm. He has a uh, systolic ejection murmur, which is uh, basically uh, a murmur heard on auscultation of the heart and uh, large blood vessels. Uh, this is uh, heard in cases of profound anemia associated uh, mainly with turbulent blood flow. Uh, he also has anemia with hemoglobin 8.2 grams um, per deciliter, uh, where we uh, know that um, the normal hemoglobin uh, level in males are, is um, between 13 to 17 grams per deciliter. He shows no signs of heart failure and he has no lymphadenopathy or hepatospinomegaly. By CV analysis, we should analyze the uh, MCV, the mean corpuscular volume, to determine if it's uh, micro or normal or macrocytic. We have to assess the leukocyte and platelet counts. We have to analyze other values which is important, such as the serum iron, the, to the total iron binding capacity, and the ferritin, which reflects the iron stores of the body. And we need to put a differential diagnosis. So, when we talk about the MCV, we could classify it as a low, normal, or high MCV. Low, which is microcytic, we could find that this is uh, either um, iron deficiency, or thalassemia, or sideroblastic anemia, or lead poisoning. If it was normocytic, then we could suspect acute blood loss or hemolysis, anemia of chronic disease, or anemia of renal failure, or myelodysplastic syndromes. If it was macro uh, cystic anemia, then it's probably folate or vitamin B12 deficiency. It could be related to drug toxicity or alcoholism or uh, chronic liver disease. If we talk about uh, microcytic anemias in specific, uh, we need to further analyze the serum iron, the total iron binding capacity, the ferritin, which, has mo which are more important. And we can find here that in iron deficiency, which is basically one of the most common or the most common uh, uh, microcytic anemia. Uh, we find that iron levels are low. 
we found the total iron binding capacities are high. We find that the ferritin, which reflects the iron stores, is low as well. So we actually did uh, the CBC and uh, we found that there's microcytic hypochromic uh, anemia, low serum iron, high uh, total iron binding capacity, and low ferritin. So the most likely diagnosis could be iron deficiency anemia. And this could be, which is the most common, as a result of chronic blood loss. Now, you have to understand and realize that anemia is just a clinical finding. So it's not a diagnosis. And this requires more investigation to determine the underlying etiology. What are the common causes of iron deficiency anemia? It could be due to blood loss or malabsorption or increased dietary intake or increased physiological demands, such as uh, infancy and adolescence. In pregnancy, the physiological demands increase. In vegetarian diet, it could be probably inadequate dietary intake. In malabsorption, the patient might have surgery, gastrectomy, or celiac disease or inflammatory bowel disease and suffer of malabsorption and cause iron deficiency anemia. However, blood loss, the most common is due to GI blood loss. It could be due to uterine blood loss in, um, in um, pre-menopausal women. It could be uh, other causes of blood loss such as chronic hemodialysis, surgical blood loss or repeated blood donations or paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Let's focus here about the blood loss due to gastrointestinal uh, tract. Um, it could be due to esophageal varices, which is serious and important. However, the most serious could be colon cancer, and uh, um, we could suspect this, uh, and we should suspect this. Um, it could be due to gastritis, uh, due to the uh, non steroid anti inflammatory drug use. Um, it could be a hookworm infest infestation. Note that the most likely source of blood loss in a male patient is the GIT tract with colon cancer as the most serious possibility. Uh, this patient in particular, he uses over-the-counter ibuprofen, so which is a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug which may predispose to erosive gastritis. So next step is evaluation of the GIT tract by upper and lower endoscopy. If we found that um, he, whatever the reason is, and now we want to uh, treat this patient, um, iron deficiency anemia is diagnosed here. So we need to treat the underlying cause, which in this case could be either cancer colon or um, um, gastritis, erosive gastritis, and then we have to start the uh, iron therapy. We start uh, with oral iron therapy. If it's not tolerated because the oral iron therapy usually um, do uh, a GIT upset, um, patient suffers from, from nausea, vomiting, uh, perhaps abdominal pain or constipation. So we shift to the intravenous iron therapy. However, if it's tolerated and the patient is compliant, we go on and we do a monthly CBC to show um, the, uh, if it's uh, if his hemat hematocrit and red blood cell indices improved or not. If it didn't improve, we go, we need to reevaluate our case and reevaluate our cause. Uh, and we should also consider iron therapy or transfusion of blood if the patient is symptomatic. However, if he takes the oral iron therapy and uh, the blood indices shows that it's improving, when it's normalized, we have to continue therapy for three months and then discontinue the oral iron and do periodic monthly CBC. If it's normal, then no further monitoring needed unless symptoms arise again. If the CBC after the uh, iron, uh, iron therapy, uh, oral iron therapy is also uh, didn't work, um, we have to reevaluate for another underlying cause and we should consider intravenous iron therapy and transfusion if symptomatic. We have to know that unless the patient has angina, heart failure or evidence of cerebral hypoxia, transfusion is not necessary and you should start with oral iron replacement. This is important to understand. However, if there is a failure to respond adequately to the oral type, you may need parenteral iron therapy. Doses required can be calculated based on the patient's starting hemoglobin and body weight. 
So the iron therapy formulations and dosing, we have the oral uh, sugar-coated iron tablets such as ferrous gluconate or ferrous sulfate. Uh, we have the intravenous injections such as iron dextran or iron sacrose. However, also the uh, IV, uh, IV parenteral, um, IV uh, iron therapy, uh, it gives also, uh, it has also a uh, side effects such as anaphylaxis or pain or flushing but now nowadays there are um, new uh, IV drugs such as uh, iron isomaltose or iron uh, carboximaltose they have fewer allergies and uh, they are more preferred key points here anemia is a clinical finding it's not a diagnosis and it requires some investigation to determine the underlying cause Iron deficiency anemia in men or postmenopausal women is primarily a result of GI blood loss. Therefore, iron deficiency anemia as a diagnosis requires or warrants you uh, to do a gastrointestinal workup. Iron deficiency anemia in women who are of reproductive age, premenopausal, is most often caused by menstrual blood loss. Fecal to ocal blood testing is negative in 50% of patients with GI cancer. So, whenever you have a negative fecal to ocal blood test, you need uh, to do uh, a gastrointestinal workout. CBC finally is the first step in evaluation of anemia. Thank you.